and all its sights and sounds. Boom de da da, boom de da da, boom de da da, boom de da da. I love the ocean. I love real dirty things. I love to go fast. I love Egyptian kings. I love the whole world and all its craziness. Boom de da, boom de da, boom de da, boom de da. I love tornadoes. I love a wreck in it. I love the giant squids. I love the whole world. It's such a brilliant place. Boom di da, 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 boom di da. I love the mountains. I love the sun so bright. I love crustaceans. I love the stars at night. I love the whole world. So many things to see. I love the lemur eyes. I love the future. I love when humans fly. I love the whole world. The place I'd rather be. Boom de da, boom de da, boom de da, boom de da. Still dirty. Still love it. I love the mountains. I love the clear blue skies. I love big bridges. I love when great whales fly. I love the whole world and all its sights and sounds. Boom di da, boom di da, boom di da, boom di da. I love the ocean. I love real dirty things. I love to go fast. I love Egyptian. Growing up Chinese during World War II, Henry Lee lives a life very different from your average teenager. Henry must learn to choose between friends or family, leaving the other behind and never looking back. Between his traditional Chinese parents and Caucasian schoolmates, Henry has trouble fitting in and is always school in Seattle. When Henry befriends Kaiko, a new Japanese student, a problem is posed to his father, an extreme Chinese nationalist who opposed him having any Japanese friends. Though in secret, the friendship soon becomes stronger, blossoming into an unbreakable compassion for one another. The couple gets through the unexpected twists and turns of life together, until they lose communication and Henry meets his wife Ethel. Now older and wiser, Henry seeks to fix the broken pieces of the unforeseen and objectionable relationship that had existed so long ago, yet had always remained in their hearts. 
Author Jamie Ford allows the reader to embark on a journey through such an important part of history that had been left behind. Join Henry and Keiko on their miraculous adventure with one another, where they risk their lives and well-being for their forbidden love. Writer and traveler Polly Evans decides that she wants to go on vacation. She has known all her life that she wants to ride horses, and so she goes to Argentina to finally capture her dream. So Polly packs her bags and heads off to Argentina. Through grueling bus rides and weird encounters with tourists, Polly gets to explore Argentina through small inns and mega hotels. In Polly's travel memoir, you will experience family men such as Robin from Los Potreros or hard-riding cowgirls like Jane from the quiet town of Cafayete. In On a Hoof and a Prayer, you will experience Argentina through an English woman's eyes. You will also learn about historical figures such as Che Guevara and Evita Perón. This book appeals to true adventurers or stay-at-home readers. It will appear to everyone who picks it up. The Keeper is a story for both soccer and ghost story lovers. The story takes place when Ogato, the world's best goalkeeper, explains to Paul Faustino, a soccer reporter, how he became such a good keeper. El Gato lived in a small town right near the jungle, and one day he finds himself wandering through the jungle to find something no one else has found, a ghost figure, the Keeper. He is trained by this mysterious man and becomes one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He finds out he must win the World Cup, something the strange forest man can never do. As if living with AIDS isn't enough to deal with, Anna, a teenage girl living in Latin America, must try her hardest to keep her many secrets from the people she trusts the most. Even though she's been abused, both physically and sexually, passed around to relatives, and even thrown into a reform center, Anna remains a brave and strong woman throughout her life. After losing her mother, father, and newborn baby sister to AIDS, Anna learns to handle her own condition very seriously and very responsibly. When her grandmother's nasty boyfriend, Ernesto, starts taking advantage of Anna and her younger sister, Isabel, Anna learns to take matters into her own hands. Anna then lives in a home for HIV-infected patients, known as the Hogar, where she meets Berto. Strong feelings develop between Anna and Berto, and after a while, they have a child together, Beatrice. When Anna and Berto's relationship starts to crumble, Anna must decide what is best for her and for Beatrice. By this book's end, readers won't believe how unbelievably grown up Anna has become and what a great mother she turns into. Ciao America is a non-fiction story about a man named Beppe Severnini who spent an entire year in a groaning house in Georgetown, Washington with his wife. In a country where there is much to explore, Americans seem to be more interested in ice cubes and recliner chairs than anything else. In this hysterical story, Severnini points out ambiguous aspects of America commonly overlooked by Americans every day. 
and gives his faultless takes on them. This witty composition will change the way Americans view an abundance of everyday action. Americas offer something for everyone. Whether on land or sea, you're bound to have a great time. So what are you waiting for? Plan your trip today! <laughs>